Go on. Digger. Digger. Digger, get inside. Digger, get in here. Get in there. Where'd you find this damn thing? Get inside. Get in here. Where the hell did you come from? I've got a cow in my front yard. No, I don't know where it came from. And right at the moment, I don't particularly care. I just want the damn thing out of my garden. Well, where, where's the pound keeper? Can't he be contacted? Yeah, he's all right. You're all right. As soon as he gets back, get him. Give me a ring. No sign. Murray Barker's up. Whoop whoop, and Council's throwing it back at me. What? Yeah, Barker's pound keeper. Oh, isn't you a butcher called Lamb? And a fireman called Burns. Oh, you two, you make a great double act. Only this isn't very amusing. Apart from the fact that it's destroying my garden, it could cause chaos. Somebody could get hurt. Well, so what are you going to do about it, boss? Not me, Doyle. We. You and me. We are going to round it up and take it down to the pound. I'm a city girl. I don't know anything about cows. Well, now is the perfect time to learn. Don't you say anything about a word. Move them up, head them out. Yeah. Thing. Well, I suppose it's better than a garden gnome, boss. Very funny, Doyle. Garden gnome doesn't eat the garden. Damn thing's eating all my azaleas. Oh, I don't believe this. To be fair, boss, it's only doing what comes naturally. Well, he's done what comes naturally once too often. The souveniring days are over, my boy. To tie you up and I can sort all this out, please run a do this. Give me a quick attention. Come here. You're a nuisance, aren't you? Now listen. No more cows. Whereabouts in the park? Near the fountain. In the fountain. All right, thank you very much. Bye-bye. I think it's rounded up another stray. We've got two now. No, you can make that three. Any advance on six? You know, there's one in the cemetery and they're not very happy about it. This is ridiculous. Hasn't anybody reported any missing cattle? No. Maybe the other doesn't know they're missing. I'm like, there's a drought up and all, isn't there? So? Well, they could all be along the travelling stop route, the big herds. Oh, shut up. Thank you very much. Had a roll on the hay, have you, Mags? If I had, you'd be the last to know about it. Well, we've got better things to do. <laughs> oh, we've got better things to do than round up stray cattle. The council is responsible under the Local Government Act. Let them do the legwork. Shop. You can't have it. I have no shit. Yeah, but you're going to. Oh, Tom, have a heart. I'm a reformed character, I swear. We've been through all this before, Keith. You keep off the grog for two weeks, you get the rifle back. I only shoot... Exercise a bit of self-control. It's good for the soul. I only shoot on my own place. Nobody else is. Cold comfort for any poor, unsuspecting visitor to the Purvis property. Look, you don't understand. One of my steers has broken its leg. Got to be put out. I can't help you. Call the knacker. Now, nick off and come back in a fortnight. What good's a farmer without a rifle? Goodbye, Keith. Heart of stone. Well, you, Mr Purvis. You don't miss you any cattle, are you? If you mean them strays, no, they're not mine. I know how to look after me fences, unlike some No, he's busy. Mention. Thank you. Bye-bye. It's just getting out of hand. The amalgamation of Mount Thomas and Widgery Shires was supposed to mean a better use of manpower. Well, now you're telling me you've got a personnel shortage. Well, quite frankly, I don't see why your problem should become my problem. Well, we don't want a bloody stampede on our hands, do we? So you don't leave us much choice. Give me some good news, Doyle. There's two more on the bowling green. I said good news? Could have been ten, boss. Well, hurry up. It's not that easy, mate. They don't exactly go where you want them to. Well, that's because some of them are females, mate. Very large females. Yeah, 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 yeah. Why don't you come and have a go? I can't. I'm the, I'm the commanding officer here. <laughs> Full of it a rank to get out of the hard yakka. No, not that at all. Some of us were born to lead, Constable Patterson. <laughs> well, you're all on, on notice. When I become a senior Connie, I'll be calling the shots too. Oh, yeah, and when's this going to be? When I pass the exam. <laughs> what, you've applied? Yep. Fantastic work, team. I'm proud of you. <laughs> Well, those cattle are secure and they've got some feeds. That should keep them happy too. Well, we haven't had any more reports, so hopefully we've seen the last of them. Can I track down the owner yet? There's no one from round here. Uh, what have you done with my bull? Now, you've been out rounding up strays and I'd like to know why I haven't been contacted. 
cattle are yours, are they, no, sir? No, no, they're not, but my bull is probably amongst them. Well, I can assure you he's not. They're all cows. And you can tell the difference, can you? I've got two older brothers, sir. I know what I'm looking for. Well, not that I don't accept your expert observations, Constable, but I think I'd like to check the strays out for myself. By all means, Mr... Um... Dempsey? Lyle Dempsey. I own Valley View. Well, strays are being held over at the stockyards, Mr Dempsey. I'll run you over if you like. Well, I would appreciate that. So, uh, what's this bull of yours like? Valentino, he's a magnificent animal. He's actually the trait leader for the 400 and 600 division day weights. I think that was remarkable enough. He also... Doesn't look to me like he's here. No. Are they up for grabs? Well, not at this stage, no. Well, what, uh, what happens to them now? Well, with any luck, the council will trace the owner and arrange for a pickup. And if they can't find him, then they might be open to an offer? I imagine they'll pull out all stops on this. After all, we are talking about his livelihood. Yeah, but if he decides to write them off, I may as well have first option. That's all I'm saying. After all, one man's loss yeah, is Yes, all right. Man. Give all the details to Constable Doyle. We'll follow it up. Yes, yeah. Mr Dempsey, how can uh, I help you? Sergeant, um, Croydon, I don't want to appear pushy here, but uh, this drover could have marched off with Valentina, or this um, maniac from next door could be involved. Which maniac? Well, so I'll get called Keith Purvis. Now, he has done this before. Done what before? Lured Valentino over to his property to service his heifers. Now, by rights, you're supposed to leave a paddock between them, but not Purvis, no. No, he wants to cash in at my expense. Keith's got his own bulls. Why would he want yours? Well, Valentino's a champion, Sergeant. I paid 20000 for him. Now, Purvis tried to buy him at the national sales. I outbid him. I got better things to do, Max. Well, it's a CI matter. Oh, no, no, it's not. It's a livestock squad matter. Well, no, it's not. The boss has already spoken to them. They said when we've got a definite lead to call them. In the meantime, it is in Maggie, your basket. Maggie, if Dempsey thinks Purse has got his ball, let him go and get it. Okay? No, well, they can't because they're not in good terms. There may be a bit of trouble. I don't have a problem with a randy bull having a bit of fun. No, you wouldn't. Now, this is where you can find Purvis, and don't worry, he won't take any pot shots at you. He hasn't got his gun. So. Mm -hmm. Have a good time. Max, what are you after doing the rest of the day? Well, I'm catching up. I've got accident report. No. It's okay. I'll clear it with the boss. No, I'm busy. I, will. I said I was clear busy. It. PJ, right. PJ, PJ, I said. PJ? Spotlighters again? Yeah, unless Purvis shot it up himself. Can you uh, read upside down, Max? No, well, according to this, it's, um, it's the right place. Yeah, well, you get the gate. <laughs> then make sure you shut it after I uh, go through. Decided to bring me gun back, have you? We've come about another matter, Mr. Purvis. Mm. Well, you may as well go and shoot the steer, Clary. Put him out of his misery. Right. Took Tom Croydon's advice. Called in the knackers. Who's the boy? Eddie, his son. So, what's all this about? Well, Keith, one of uh, Lyle Dempsey's bulls has gone missing, mate. Yeah? Yeah. Which one? Valentino. <laughs> Serves him right. What did you expect, the way he looks after his fences? He thinks it might have strayed onto your property. No, he doesn't. He thinks I've pinched it. Keith, he said that you bid against him at the national sales. Well, that's true enough. I had my eye on Valentino. Oh, he's a beauty. But it went beyond my price range. I thought Dempsey might be interested in syndicating him. Offered him a half share, but he wouldn't be in it. That's Dempsey's fault. Yeah, how's that? Bloody absentee farmers. Won't spray their weeds. Seeds blowing everywhere, blackberries springing up, rabbit holes under them. That's how many steer broke his leg. Mm. A damn shame. Keith, you don't know where this bull might be. Not in my place. Mind you, I'm not saying he hasn't been. He fences my girls. <laughs> Especially when they're uh, in the paddock next door, eh? 
Well, that bull's got a mind of his own. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Boy, Keith Herbert no. is a hard-working, decent old man. Now, he'd be the first person to help you out if you're in trouble. Yeah, that's true, Mags, if he could stand up. So what? He likes a bit of home brew. Look, every Friday night, he gets drunk, goes berserk with a rifle. He shoots out a few tin cans. Big deal. I tell you what, one Keith Herbert is worth ten Lyle Dempsey's in my book. You just don't like the man, Maggie. Well, it isn't difficult. That man is just playing at being a farmer. You don't have to have dung on your boots to justify owning cattle. Look, he's a businessman, and he's a good one. He's a mercenary swine. That's Ooh. what he is. Ooh. Yeah, well, I would be too if I just lost a $20,000 ball. If you two have finished, you might like to tell me what you found. Well, there's no sign of the animal on the Purvis property, and we've checked the neighbouring farms. No one's seen it. I can't understand how a one-ton bull can disappear unless it's been trucked out of the district. Well, it could be as simple as it wandering off into the scrub or the national park. Well, it's a vast area. We need more manpower. Seriously, should we be devoting this much time to recovering someone's lost animal? <laughs> You've changed your tune, haven't you? Well, what happened to the elusive Murray Barker? Shouldn't he be back by <clears throat> He came home? and went. He's gone off after that drover. Lyle Dempsey's here. Mr. Dempsey, Constable Doyle and Senior Detective Hashem have already been out to the Purvis property. There's no sign of your bull. I know. I found him. It looks like it's been shot through the head with a high-powered rifle. So how long has it been dead, Tebow? Probably less than three hours. 20,000 down the drain. Even more in lost potential. This bloody farm is going to suck me dry. We'll bring the truck over and get rid of the winchy mutt. Tell me. Didn't see or hear anything? I haven't been here. No, as soon as I noticed him missing, I went up to see you boys and uh, been out looking for him since then. Is this where you usually keep him? Well, no, that's the whole point. Normally he's up in the paddock near the house. Didn't need the bullet table. Mm. Why would anyone want to shoot him? That's to get even. But I didn't think even Purvis would go this far. Don't be bloody silly, I didn't shoot his bull. How could I? You've got me gun. We haven't got a spear floating around, have you, Keith? If I did have, I would have used it to shoot me steer instead of calling in Clary Dodds. Mr. Dempsey reckons you want to even the score. Yeah, well, he would. That's the way city blokes think. Everyone's their enemy. They're so busy watching their backs and eyeing people off, they lose track of what's important. He's right. Yes, that's all very well, but the situation is escalating here. We've got a dead bull on our hands now. Well, can't you spare someone? Yes. Well, first opportunity, I would like some assistance. Yes, thank you. What is it, Patterson? I hear Maggie sitting in the senior Connie exam. Yeah, that's right. Well, I mean, is there much point? Even if you get the job, don't you have to wait till there's a vacancy? No, I wouldn't let that worry you. Yeah, well, I'd have a go. It's just that don't women get preferential treatment? Do as you they? heard, there is no such thing as positive discrimination in the police force. It's a world of equal opportunity out there. Now, I've got something here you should have a look at. Oh, yeah, don't be too bothered, boss. I can come no, back no, no. Here we go. Promotional examinations. Have a read of that. Closing date's next Thursday. You've got to write them a letter. Now, I'll have a look at the letter for you, if you like. Hey, excuse me. Just spoke to your mate Keith. He gave us a lecture on big city morality. One of his favourite subjects. Yes, well, he says he's got nothing to do with the shooting, but, mate, he uh, could have access to other firearms, please. I'll check the register. Ah. Why is it you believe everything that Dempsey has to say? You know why, Maggie? Because Purvis had motive and he had opportunity and no-one can vouch for him, that's why. Well, I can't believe that Keith would go to all that trouble. Neither myself. can I. What was the weapon? 303. Oh, that narrows it down. So half the countryside. Dug the bullet out of its head. It's with ballistics. Quite a night. 
You've had your fun today, Cooper, chasing strays around town, but real life goes on. Who are the other suspects? The other spotlighters. We've seen them around the area. <laughs> yeah, but they shoot rabbits, ferals, rags, not bulls. We still can't rule them out. Who else was around? Clary Dodds, the necker. Yeah, but what motive would he have for shooting the bull? Well, none probably, but, you know, he hangs around the area. I'm sure he would have seen something. Well, if he knew anything, he would have volunteered the information when he spoke to him. Not Clary. Not unless you ask him directly. If you didn't ask him directly, he wouldn't tell you anything. Better bring him in for a chat. Well, you know what I've been doing? We've been bumping into each other all day. So shooting the pervis deer and removing Dempsey's bull? That's it? I reckon that's enough. It's time we travel out to these places, do the job, get back to the abattoirs. It's a fair whack. What sort of weapon do you use? 30-30. We'd like to see it. Help yourselves, it's out in the truck. Constable? Mr Dodds, can I have the keys, please? It's not locked. Well, where do you keep it? Under the seat. It's pretty unwise leaving it accessible to anyone who walks past, isn't it? Well, if it's not safe out the front of a police station, where is it safe? Have you been to the Purvis property before? Keith always shoots his own animals. But he has had to put a bit of business my way since you took his rifle. First time you've been to the Dempsey farm? Mm. You see or hear anything unusual at either place? No, I just got on with my job. Oh, I hated cutting that bull off. Bloody shame. Still, Dempsey's loaded. I'll tell you, if it had happened to some other poor bugger, I would have felt sorry for him. The way it is, I only feel sorry for the bull. Right, in the future, Mr. Dodds, if your weapon's in the trap, you'll lock it up, please. Thank you for coming in, Mr. Dodds. Okay, <coughs> Strong, silent type. Well, when it comes to Dempsey, Clary has some firm opinions and not much sympathy. What do you have to say? Oh, that Dempsey can afford the loss. Well, he's probably right. He'll claim it on his tax, right off against his insurers. It's only a matter of doing the paper, Will. Well, what's wrong with that? It's good business sense. He only thinks in dollars and decimal points. He hasn't got his heart in the land, only his wallet. Well, you think he might have done it himself to claim on the insurance? An implicated purvis. Except that Dempsey doesn't own a 303. I checked. Well, what's to stop him bringing in someone else to do it? Well, the same thing could be said of Purvis, Mags. He could have hired someone to bump off the bull. Well, you're making it sound like a gangland murder, Peter. Well, these are all fascinating theories, and maybe tomorrow the jigs are all start falling into place, but I've had enough for one day. Me too. I'm going home to have a hot bath. Let's grab your back for you, Mags. In your dreams. Dig, got a surprise for you, mate. There you go. Try and cheer him up. Dig is his best mate. Oh, he's a dog. A mongrel. Haven't you ever had a pet? <laughs> Only the centrefold for oh. It's good exercise, though, you know. Well, what is? It's walking the dog. Yeah, go to a park, strive have a conversation oh, with a yeah. fellow dog owner. Take him home to your place with some good oats. Okay. You're both home. Yeah, you want to join in, boss? Well, no, thank you. Dig has never done this before, has he? Well, I've never had to tie him up before. But he's a smart dog. He'll come back. Oh, yeah. That's if he can. I mean, he could have been hit by a car. Oh, much. well, think how much you'll save on dog food. <laughs> Thanks a lot, boys. I'm glad I came. You've cheered me up no end. No so, worries. boss, are these two comedians telling jokes again? Yeah, they're, they're hilarious. <laughs> huh, you're late. Yeah, I had to finish a brief. Do you want a drink? Yeah, thanks. That's uh, so Chris. What's going on? I mean, how am I just supposed to forget what happened between us? Not now, eh? Hey, boss, same again? No, oh, no, thanks. I think I'll wander off see if the prodigals return. What about you, Maggie? Ah, uh, no, I'm going to go home and hit the books, thanks. That's what you should be doing, Patterson. Oh, why bother? Schultz pass the exam. Get out of it. <laughs> Good night. A hundred questions in an hour and a half. Multiple choice, You've mate. You've still got to tick the right boxes, eh? Digger! Here, boy! Digger! Any calls on my dog? No, but no news is good news. Oh, I wish I could be that optimistic. Murray Barker's back. He's located the drover in there arranging to pick up strays. Oh, at least we're making some progress. How are you going with those 303 regos? Ten in the district. I'm calling you. Keith, I hope this isn't about your rifle. No, it's about my seaman. Some mongrels pinched it. I had 500 straws of semen stored in this tank from six different bulls. Some of it was imported. Hmm. 
So, um, what sort of money are we talking about? On average, about $20 a straw. $10,000. Very good. So, uh, they fit into these compartments here, do they? Yeah, ten in each. Normally, I'd have about a thousand, but I sold some. Bit strapped for cash. All right, so what? That's liquid nitrogen. Oh, yeah. Got to be kept at the right temperature. Right, so whoever stole it, they have to transfer it to another container almost immediately. Right? Yeah, that's right. Keith, does each tank have a serial code? Yeah, all right. That's why he left it. Went for a straight transfer instead. Where's it usually kept? In the shed. What sort of security do you have? Well, padlock at night. Nothing during the day. Well, who'd ever think of knocking off your semen? It's unheard of. Only someone like them should even think of it. I don't think you can make that assumption. Mr. Of course it was him. He accused me of shooting his bull. Now he reckons he'll try and wipe me out. We'll follow up all leads, all right? Yeah, well, you better make sure that Dempsey is one of them. Hang or on, I... nothing. I do not want this matter escalating. Is that I'm, clear? I'm not going to do anything illegal. But if he did do it, don't let him wriggle out of it with any smart Alec back chat. Do something fast. Shall we pay a visit to Mr Dempsey? You know, somehow I didn't picture Keith Purvis using artificial insemination. He seemed more the au naturel type to me. <laughs> what about the bulls? Well, at least they still managed to get their rocks off. Oh, fabulous. How do you know this, Maggie? Well, that's how they do it. Hang about, hang about, hang about. Do, do, do what? What? Collect the semen. Look, they, they tie up the cow and then the bull jumps her and when he's poised and ready to do the deed, so to speak, they whip on an artificial... Um, Apparatus, and then Bob's your uncle, it's all over. Right, so the bull never actually gets to do it with the cow. No, no, he just thinks that he's done it with the cow. It's the best way of extracting the semen, they get better quality that way, and uh, I suppose it's more satisfying for the bulls. Sat Satis? How on earth could you find a more satisfying man? Well, it's better than the other way, believe Which me. Which is? You wouldn't want to know. Never happened to a whole fashion sense. May become a thing of the past. <laughs> Mr. Dempsey, how are you? Oh, how, how do you uh, bring yourself to uh... Set your arm like the cows are. Yeah. <coughs> it's all part of farming. If you're going to faint, let me know. Yeah, you'll catch me. I'll get out of your way. So you, uh, you're here about my bull? Uh, no, nothing on that score. We've just been over the Purvis property. What's Keith up to? Well, someone just broke into his shed and stole several hundred straws of semen from his tank. Don't tell me he thinks I did it. Yeah, it's payback. I see. So it's all deteriorated into accusations that I'm a thief. Well, of course, the old fool could be going senile. Do you artificially inseminate your cows, Mr Dempsey? Yes. Yes, but I purchase only the very best genetic material. I certainly wouldn't use any of his inferior rubbish on my stock. Then you won't mind if we take a look at your tanks. You can help yourself. As long as you don't expect me to give you the royal tour. Now, let me ask you, uh... What exactly uh, are you doing when you, uh... What does it look like? Well, I, uh, I don't really want to ask, you know. Pregnancy testing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I put this load in with Valentino before he died. Hopefully a fair percentage of them will be in calf. Oh, he made it with all of them? Yeah, he ratios one bull to 40 cows. Ooh, lucky okay, bull. Yeah, I suppose we should look on the bright side. At least he didn't die a virgin. How's it going, 307? We haven't lost any. The drover's steering them towards the outskirts of town. When they're safely on the back road, we'll hightail it out of here. Meet you at the junction, 10 minutes. Now, Thomas 307, back on channel. We're not going to graze on our fun. gardens or foul our footpaths again. He would not risk it, Maggie. He's a risk taker. He plays the stock market, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, he does, but it's not that sort of stock. He is so arrogant, he probably thinks he can get away with it. I take it we've got some sort of conflict as to whether Dempsey's a suspect. Well, not in my mind. He's been at odds with Purvis over the syndication and purchase of that bull. Now he believes that Purvis shot it and now he wants to even the score. Max, you're allowing your personal dislike for the man to colour your judgement. And you're his biggest fan. Did you get any evidence out at Dempsey's farm? No. Well, no evidence, no case, though. Well, you can't take a theory to court. I'll get it. No, we'll get it. If there is any. Well, if you require any assistance, the livestock squad rang at long last and they can spare someone. Uh, it's okay, boss. Mags and I will follow it through, right, Mags? Yeah, no, we want to finish the job. 
You have finally got the extra manpower you've been begging for, and now you're telling me you don't want it. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you agree on something. There's more trouble near the Purvis place. It sounds like Dempsey and Purvis are trading shots. All right, you better get out there. Cooper, you radio Patterson, get him to pick you up. <laughs> Convention. We've had a reported gunfire out this way, Mr. Purvis. Oh, I see. And you thought that Dempsey and me was having a go at each other. Geez, you've got a vivid imagination, you coppers. Sir, obviously it was a false report. Now, we won't be troubling you anymore, all right? The damn shooters. They've been out and off and on all day, banging away, taking pot shots and anything that moves. Any idea who they are? You bloody well go and find out for yourself. That's your job. I've got better things to do. Hey, I think they're driving an orange jute. Helpful old bastard. So, what do you reckon? Someone giving us a bum steer. Here we go again. You blokes are coming from the south end. We'll take the main track, huh? I'm driving. So. Nice going, Matt girl. This isn't right. Maggie, we've been this way before. No, we okay, haven't. Excuse me, what, that tree? I've seen a tree before. We well, came this way. Well, why did you come back down because here again? Because you told again. me to go this I way. I told you to excuse go left Excuse me, the Doyle, ball. this is a chase. Now, the purpose of a chase is to pursue its speed in order to apprehend. Is that clear? Look, we were supposed to go right at that fork, OK? I'm sorry, let's go. Really? Yeah. Now, you sure about this? I am sure about that, OK? Can Great. I just have my map back? Go. Yeah, well, let's just hope Wayne and Adam are there. Just go right, OK? Fantastic. What'd you go do that for? Hit the mud, mate. You're the one who told me to turn. All right, go find something flat to put under the wheel, like your head. I'll see what I can do here. right eh? Well, there's the orange U. What the hell's going on? Careful, man. Here you go. Great, now go get some more. We're gonna do the low side wheel. Hey Wayne! Over here. We've got a casualty. Digger? Yeah, it looks like him. What happened, boy? He's really hurt. Must get him to the vet. He might not make it. We could be out here for ages. He's really suffering. You're not saying we should put him down? It could be the kindest thing. The boss would kill us, mate. <laughs> well, do you want to tell him we just stood around and watched him die? Let's get on with it. Sorry about this, boy. So, he's been lying out there for almost 24 hours suffering while you get your jollies hooning around plugging native animals full of holes. We thought he was feral. The only thing that's feral around here, son, is you. We were just having a bit of fun. Using animals for target practice. Only foxes and rabbits. Anything that moved more like it. Well, let me tell you something, son. If my dog doesn't survive surgery, I'm going to make your life a living hell. Get the message? Loud and clear. Now, get him out of here before I do something I regret. OK, Miles, what can you tell us about Dempsey's bull? Nothing. Nothing. Where were you yesterday morning? Mowing lawns at the nursing home. All morning? No. Helped in the kitchen after that. Didn't finish till after four. And all out of the kindness of your heart. <laughs> Must be joking. I'm working out 100 hours of CBO. 
Well, it's a good job you blokes got bogged. We'd never have found Digger, and I would have been left wondering whatever became of him. Well, we hope he makes it. At least he's got a chance now. Yeah, well, it was touch and go from when we first showed up, wasn't it, mate? We yeah. thought he was a goner. It was like he knew we were trying to help him and he hung on. Well, I'm very grateful. Adam? What's mate? He reckons he was at the nursing home on a CBR at the time of the shooting. I'll verify it with the agency. Hey, PJ, ballistics have confirmed that it was Austin Blair's 303 that killed that bull. Hmm. So how's he going to explain that? Didn't use my gun yesterday. I left it at home under my bed. Yeah? <clears throat> Can you prove it? Miles will tell you. Well, why would Miles tell him? He's a mate of yours. He'd back you up, wouldn't he? I didn't have it. Somebody did. And somebody used it to shoot Dempsey's bull. Don't know. Are you protecting Miles? No. He didn't have it either. We were both working over at the old people's home. Go every Tuesday. What were you doing? Cleaning dunnies. Miles gets the good stuff. Doing gardens and cooking. You supervised? Yeah, by matron. Just spreading down my neck the whole bloody time. Couldn't even have a smoke. The boys showed up at eight, they left at four. The groundsman supervised Miles for the morning before releasing him to help out in the kitchen with the lunches. The director of nursing confirmed she kept a close watch on Austin because, quote, unquote, he kept slacking off. Supervised the whole time? Yep. Well, that's it then. We'll have to let him go on this one. But you can still charge them with possess a firearm when prohibited, dangerous driving, resist arrest, willful damage, and discharging a firearm on a property without consent. Don't ever get on his wrong side. <laughs> uh, Valentino, found on the Dempsey property, shot sometime between nine and midday yesterday. <clears throat> That's a bull? Use your imagination. Now, Miles and Austin, they're not involved. But someone had access to Austin's weapon. One of his friends, unless there's a connection with Purvis and Dempsey, I doubt it, though. Now, the seaman went missing today. Let's see you draw that. Straws of semen. Very creative, very <laughs> creative there. Yeah. Thank you. Mm. Now, is this related to the shooting or is it related to a separate incident? Well, Mags, this morning, you thought Dempsey did it. It's payback. Yeah, well, now I'm not so sure. Could be someone else who's trying to stir up trouble between Dempsey and Purvis. But Clary. All right, Clary. What's the link between Clary and Austin? May not be one. But, look here, this... The answer, Miss Doyle, should be staring us in the face. There's a fight at the pub. Call the police! Shut up! Oh, Break it up! Oh, get up your butt! That's enough! Get your butt out! Get your butt Why is it Eddie's fault? Why? I lent him the rifle. Came over Monday night and asked if he could borrow it. I didn't see any harm in letting him have it. He was a mate. Why didn't he use his father's weapon? Clary's real strict about guns. If Eddie ever wanted to use the 30-30, his old man had to be there, breathing down his neck. I told Eddie, go on ahead in the ute and wait. Tell Keith I'm on my way. See, Eddie's learning the business. He's as keen as mustard. You know, I promised him, you can do the job. But you wanted to supervise his son? Yeah, make sure everything was done right. Dad gave me the directions to the Purvis place. Said to wait for him in the south paddock, the one with the square dam. Except all the signs around there were shot up. You couldn't tell one place from another. And you weren't familiar with the district? Nah. I didn't want to hang around like a dill. So I took a punt. Found the paddock, just like Dad said. And the animal was there? Yeah, a bull. And this was the animal your father was to shoot? Uh, not exactly. All Mr Purvis said was come and shoot me Angus. But you were confident that this was the animal he meant? It was in the right place. So there was no one else around? Yeah. Didn't you think that was a little bit strange, Eddie? Yeah, a bit. What did you do next? Got lost to the 303 and shot it. And your dad didn't know about the rifle, did he? Why? 
didn't you wait for your dad? Just wanted to do something on my own for a change. Seems simple enough. I'm driving along and I see Zeddy in the ute coming out of the Dempsey place. She says he's done the job. Bring the truck and we'll move the bull. I nearly died. I mean, what do you do when your son's just shot a prize bull by mistake? <laughs> Honestly, if I'd have had more time, I would have bloody throttled the stupid little idiot. So you didn't go back to the Dempsey property? Couldn't risk it. Just had to hope that nobody saw Eddie. So you went to the Purvis place? Told Eddie to drive the union to the scrub, pick it up later. He jumped in the truck and then we went on to Keith's place. It's when you showed up. Thought we were done for then. You should have told us straight away, Mr. Dodds. Hey, listen, you won't be too hard on us, will you? After all, it was an accident. Well, Eddie may have shot the wrong animal, but we can't charge him with anything because there was no intent. Well, what about under the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals Act? There was no cruelty. It was a clean kill. And Clary? No, there's been no offence. Dempsey will have to take out a civil action. Poor kid. Poor bull. Oh, you may find this very amusing, but bear in mind this isn't over yet. We still don't know who stole a semen. So, I think it's come through it okay. He should recover quite quickly now. He's strong and healthy. Thanks, t -ball. I feel partly responsible for what happened. Oh, well, you'll be able to make up for it with lots of tender, loving care. Oh, we'll be getting plenty of that. <laughs> it's lucky he was shot with a 22. I heard the other boy had a 303. Yes, he never would have lived to tell the tale. Yeah. <laughs> uh, T-Ball, let me ask you, uh, when you preg test, do you uh, usually stick your arm up the cow's backside? <laughs> yes, why do you ask? No, it's just that I saw Dempsey doing it. No, he couldn't have been. No, all his cars were due to come on heat this week. I PG'd them myself. Uh, gave them prostate land and it's a hormone treatment. Right, so if he wasn't preg testing, what would he be doing? Probably AIing them. Does Dempsey do his own artificial insemination? He said he did. Well, I started off doing it for him, then he used a technician, and now he's qualified himself. Tipo, what sort of equipment would he have? Oh, a toolbox with his gloves and his kit in it, and a flask of warm water, and two thawther straws. Mr. Dempsey, when we're at your place earlier, you said you're preg testing your cows. No, no, you assumed that I was. And you went along with it then? Yeah, well, you just accused me of theft. I couldn't very well tell you that I was in the process of AIing them. You would have stopped me and I would have lost the opportunity. The opportunity to dispose of the evidence. It was Valentino's semen, and it was a little bit that I imported. Now, you took a look in my tank. You didn't find any of Purvis's straws. Well, that's because you disposed of what you needed. Use the rest. Look, I had nothing to do with it. But if I had, I would have had good reason. After all, it was Purvis who killed my bull. No. No, he didn't, mate. It was Eddie Dodds, the Necker's son. You see, he was supposed to shoot a steer at the Purvis property, but he went to the wrong place. It was an unfortunate mistake. A mistake. Mr. Dempsey, we believe you impregnated your cows with stolen semen and to make sure that that stock doesn't go missing, we have a warrant to seize. Well, I've got all the paperwork to Then you me. won't mind if we DNA test the progeny. You're insane. Looks like Keith Purvis could be the winner out of all of this. You could end up with all of uh, Lyle Dempsey's calves. Yeah, yeah. More calves. It's not going to uh, cost him a cracker. <laughs> Where are the cows? They've been adjusted. Who's paying? We are. Police force from the building. It doesn't come out of our wages. So what happens if the DNA test proved Dempsey innocent? Oh. Won't. Oh, boss, thought you'd be home with diggers tonight. Uh, he's still at the vets. Couldn't get there before closing. He's going to think I've forgotten him. Fred, no more time. Step into my office. Oh, now, what do you think she's going to do in there that you can't do to him out here in the public place? You lot can be in on this too if you want to. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. I reckon Chris Riley could lead boss astray given half a chance. What do you reckon, Adam? Mate. Mate. How are you? I knew you couldn't get there before five. You can stay with me during the day and you can pick him up after work if you like. You're a wonderful woman. Hubba hubba. Ooh. 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 Ain't love grand. 
So, why won't you admit that I was right about Dempsey? All right. This time, you were right. Thank you. But next time, Mags, don't be in such a hurry to put your foot in it, OK? Yep. Let the suspects put themselves in on their own. I know. I've got to learn to sit back. I'm aware of that. No, I'm not saying you haven't got good instincts. You have. They're very good. But, Mags, in this partnership, I'm the one with the experience. Well, I'm not saying that, well, it's healthy to have somebody with uh, a few ideas, uh, probing, ask a few questions. Criticising. Yeah, well, it's healthy. Then Nothing why do you fly ideas. off the handle every time I offer an opinion? Because I'm used to working on my own. Oh, That's please. Right. Well, I admit it, I'm, uh, I'm a little bit inflexible at times. Well, I just hope that you remember this conversation next time we work together because I don't want to have to go breaking you in hang all on, over again. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Who's breaking who in here, Mr. Doyle? Okay, I've got a little bit to learn. A little bit? you got to admit that we're not always on the same wavelength. Well, that's true. That'll come. Yeah, I suppose it will. Now, we're working together. Understanding where that person's coming from. Good team, Maggie. We have our moments. That's my shout, eh? Yeah, it is. 